Good morning. Uh, May 6, 2024. This is a regular scheduled meeting of the Greens County Commission. Uh, if you wish, please rise for the pleasure of your meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chairman Wakefield opened the floor to discuss the Masonic smoker policing concern. The public voiced their concern about the policing concern that happened on Saturday, April 13th, during the Masonic smoker fundraising event. I think we could clean that up a little bit as far as I'm going to do Yep. 
Second by Abriel. Any discussion? Barring no further discussion, we move on to a voice vote concerning the bills as this is a monetary issue. Uh, item positive, native, and negative. Edlund? Aye. Zorn? Aye. Cranby? Aye. Abriel? Aye. Wait for those aye. Bills approved. Monthly office reports. We don't need, we don't need any uh, motion to accept these. This is just for our information. Questions on the monthly office reports? No. Nope. Well, we'll move on from that. Um, clerk of court contract. Clerk of court on. contract with the state to provide court services. Uh, this contract we've entered into with the state, I think it's, I think they took over in the late, late 90s. Um, it, the FTEs are based on the WAPSI study um, for the new commissioner. The WAPSI study looks at the two previous years court cases and does a weighted scale with those cases. Uh, some of those, uh, the case types that are the heaviest are felonies and some of the big civil cases. Um, so it fluctuates from year to year. You know, example, last year we had two felonies. This year, so far we have 10. So each year, it just, it fluctuates. And they take the average of the two previous years. Um, I know I have expressed my concern in the past with the, the uh, WAPSI study and how they conduct that, because there's several things that they don't take into consideration uh, for reimbursing us for a time. I think the last time I did one was 12 years ago, so I'm happy to say that they are changing the way that they're doing the WAPSI study. Because there's been a lot of changes that have happened that I, I personally don't think have been taken into consideration. Um, the North Dakota Supreme Court has developed the, um, the North Dakota self-help site. So this is to help a lot of uh, individuals, pro se individuals that want to represent themselves. Uh, attorneys are expensive and a lot of individuals can't before that. So they have rolled out a lot of different types of cases where individuals can um, try to represent themselves in court. You know, for us, clerk status has been a huge change as it's been a different time management. Um, it's more counter time, it's more phone time, more email time, you know, helping those pro se individuals. And unfortunately, um, that type of uh, work is not considered in that boxy site. So I think moving forward, I, I hope that that is included in there. So 
Um, and you can see on page two, it just shows the funding amount that they reimbursed the state for. And like I said, that um, FTE number, it, it just wavers from year to year based on, on case type. So, so anyways, I'm, I'll be looking forward to doing the new WASI study whenever they roll that out to get a better idea. Um, other than that, there really is, it's kind of the same standard issue. I don't think anything else has changed from what I can see in the contract from two years ago. So what is the percentage that they redeemed the court report? So you see that on page two? Is it page two? Mm -hmm. Number two. And I think that's went down a couple of tenths from the two previous years. So, and then like I said, in the two years that I'll take this year and next year and um, so like I said, that's the one that labors. And I do think there will be a significant change on the boxes that I have long right to about what I feel is applicable to this. So yeah, so they view the court of court position as basically a point two seven. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that's down to almost forty uh, half time position a number of years ago. And some of those things have changed. You know, I want, I can't remember what year it was. Um, you know, like no liability insurance used to be a B misdemeanor, and they changed that to an infraction. So some of those law changes have changed some of those those numbers because those obviously don't require a hearing anymore. But there's different things. Mm -hmm. Same thing with you know with, with marijuana. I can't remember what the else is, but it's an infraction, but it still must appear. It's, you know, there's things that are always kind of shifting. So how does this mesh overall with the state's push to try to centralize the urban force position? I'm not sure. I, I think updating the WASI study would give them a better idea of what they would be, you know, the undertaking. I don't think we, we can't compare 2012 to what's happening now. Like I said, the pro state would is, you know, the economy is not the best right now and attorneys are expensive. And this gives people that option to be able to represent themselves. But unfortunately, that takes a lot more time from us, which is not reflected in that WASI study. Like I said, 2012 was the last time I did that study. So it's been a... It's been a doesn't the city have a proposal to take over the court reports? Not right a, now. That did die in last said. year. And as I... I haven't heard anything this year. I, I don't... I think it was a really pretty quick plan they threw together, and it doesn't sound like... It, you know, <coughs> overwhelmingly, the counties rejected it. Okay, so this won't... So, this would not affect their eventual decision. No, this is a stopgap measure between then and now. Yeah, because ne next year is a legislative year. <clears throat> and if that went into effect, it would take place January 1st, 2026. However, it being an elected position, it would then take over January 1st, 2027. So we'll have, if it went into effect. If that came into being, we'd have two more of these contracts. Yeah, thank you. So you need authorization to the commission to accept this? Yes, yes. We'll need a motion to that effect. I'll make that motion. Motion by Avril to accept the funding agreement for the clerk of court services in Freaks County. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Tran. Uh, as we're dealing with a monetary issue, we'll move on to a roll call vote. Ida, the positive, negative, the negative. Edland. Aye. Zorn. Aye. Tran. Aye. Gabriel. Aye. Wakefield, both sides. Contract accepted.
Mary Lee Nelson. She is the sending out a document. Uh, they want to set up the Cheyenne River Water Trail right here. They already have that. We're asking the county commission for permission to place signage on roads to direct visitors to Johnson's Landing on the north end of Lake Ashley <coughs> on the corner of the Hanover Bridge, perimeter site, and, get, and signage directing to Sydney Landing. And then she sent a map separately, which I think is in <coughs> And with that, if you read the memorandum of understanding, it has some commitments that the Riggs County High Department has to take care of. They are referred to as the site manager of those sites, which involves um, putting in the dock, taking out the dock, um, keeping the signage up after it's once put up by the Water Trail Committee. They will pay for all that, but after <coughs> that, it's up to the county to take care of it. Um, there's gonna be picnic tables and maybe map kiosks, bicycle racks, docks, garbage receptacles, and hopefully, guys have time to read it. So it's a, it's a, a financial and a time commitment to the county? It would be. I think we'd better push this forward and we can search this a little bit. Yeah, was, I don't know if Jamie's had time to look at it. Yeah. It's a great idea. I love it. a lot of counties that are involved. It, it's a great idea, but is it, it shouldn't involve public funds. Right. Because it be a private concern like a light path. In today's environment where money is short, I don't know if we need to be venturing out on. But let's push it forward and get some more information and talk about it in the future. Yeah, but I don't want more Yeah. No, I mean, we need to, we need to get a, a, an accurate breakdown of the cost and time it's going to be to, to the county. I don't know if they're having more meetings so that the representative could go. Yeah. Well, I mean, this was an unsolicited request for money. Um, I mean, I know for years that trail has been yeah. in place. Just isn't that no signage. No signage sign sign for it. I think the Corps of Engineers is <coughs> some of the, right. the dock and stuff like that. Maybe the game of fish. Right. So we're, we're talking like three sites, is that correct? Three, three sites for us. Thanks. Is it Johnson? I don't know what that is. That's that's David Johnson. Anyway, let, let's. There's a lot more to research. Yes, we need to know if landowners are on board. We need to know if the public's on board with this. We're spending their money right. on something that used to be or was a responsibility of the federal or the state government. They're passing that cost on on the bus. Yep. And I'm sure it's not restricted to Greeks only residents only, is it? And it's going to be people from all over the world. There we go. <laughs> Coming to Cooperstown, buying stuff. Yeah. So a lot bigger, a lot bigger, deeper pockets oh. you paying for this. Uh, anything else, Wayne? I think that's it. I mean, I mean have uh, comments about that county road eight. Yep and the plane was out for today, but it's bad any time you have a pavement on top of gravel, or gravel on top of pavement, especially on the ends. <coughs> Graveling or pushing because the water stands to the pavement. So, and we're still seeking funding sources for that to try to We're still operate. seeking funding sources, and then uh, I suggested we should maybe get some letters of support. Right. Like the school, the mayors, the business people, some farmers, and things like that. Have you been? Have you contacted them? 
I have, I just talked to one farmer this morning that had a concern and I said we were probably do that, uh, ask for what <coughs> it's And it's going to be in a PDF type document so that we can send it to the state. Yep. You're going to get that put together? I can make that. To advertise or something like that. I know Lionel Sedlin said he would gladly do that. Do we are have we applied for a grant for that as of yet, or we just we just reached out to the state? We applied for a grant for that, and it was rejected. Yeah. But they said they kept yep. it in the in the book or the computer. Yeah, it was. It was more funding comes later. Right. So it wasn't rejected outright. It was pushed on the road. It was pushed on for later. Or because of lack of funding. They said, if you need any more help, if we need help with that, it's supposed to call them or email them to help us. Do we have a cost as to how much would be to fix that roadway? We had an estimate from this 2020, I think, when KLJ had put this together to uh, try to get enough funding so that we could do it properly not be short, so they always make it more than the project is. Do you remember how much it was? Pardon? Do you remember how much it was? It was over three million. Yeah. Three million? Okay. Which would probably be five million now. And the concern back then was, of course, getting the money in place, our share of the county's share of it, but also the, the water was coming up so quickly and it was going to go over the road also to the west of that project, which would have basically we would have built a bridge and over. Now with the water stabilized again, we can look at, at raising it up, hopefully in conjunction with Foster County. Because if you just go a mile in Foster County, the local water at that time was right to come over. So we that would, that would save the farmer in this right there. Yeah. So conceivably by the time we got to our part of it raised a mile away the road would have been underwater and it would have been for naught. Right. right. Now that's stabilized some and we can hopefully work with Foster. Foster County in on this also? Foster County, I don't know if they applied for anything, but they have told me that if anything happened the water over there for Gilbert's and Stav and told to go ahead and start raising the right. So there has been a commitment by Foster County compared to what we had before. <clears throat> Anything else? Is there a commitment from Foster County that if we were to spend the money to do ours, would they go in with us and do theirs? I don't know. Right now, of course, like John said, the water is stabilized, it's gone down. The last fall, it was just like two feet from the part that we never raised to the east. And so that should be raised up at least two feet, maybe three. And the part that we raised up before raised up one foot. It's also going to be widened out because it's not very safe, especially to the west section. It's pretty much two to one steps. Mm -hmm. And uh, people won't obey the signs. Mm -hmm. slow down. So. Okay. That's it. That's it. Thank you, Wayne. Unless you want me to go ahead and start filming. If you want, you drive your shovel in the wheel, girl. Yeah. <laughs> right. We can afford at this point. Uh, county f property. Uh, is somebody here for that or not? I can. I, I don't know what I can. I don't see anyone else here for the fair. Okay, board. then, then we'll, we'll just delay that till the end. Till okay. The end then, because Jamie is doing some work on that anyway. Okay. We'll, we'll get. We'll move that to the end of the end of this meeting. All right, that brings us to the Sheriff Beaver policing issue, as it's been defined here. Um, I think we'll do it probably the same way we did last time. We will hear from the state's attorney, the sheriff, and the public comment, and then back to the commission. Again, I want to emphasize none of this has any legal binding. Uh, we can't force anybody to say anything. We can't stop anybody from saying what they want. 
Uh, you're, not, you're not obligated to answer any questions that we pose to you. We should be obligated to answer questions posed to us. We are the elected officials. If we don't answer the question, of course, it reflects badly on us or any other elected official. Uh, it went very smoothly last time as far as the demeanor and it was a very courteous back and forth. I, I, I would imagine it's going to be the same way this, this time. Um, I don't think there's any formal <coughs> setting to this. I, I think we just have to take it as it comes, keeping in mind that this is the public gaining information, asking questions of the public <coughs> officials that they have put in place to serve them. The public officials owe it to the public <laughs> to answer the questions. To not answer the questions is basically just sticking a finger in their eye. Uh, why, why, would, why would we have a public official that says, no, I'm not going to answer that question, when answering the question should be a benefit to us or anybody other official. So, we'll move on. I, where we left off last time, um, State's Attorney Tennyson uh, was going to get the original email from the sheriff that went to the Ohio Patrol requesting troopers. And that email was redacted. And so there's been a question of what the redaction was. Uh, the, sheriff, the sheriff had um, put forward that the redaction had to do with some drug issues within the county. And it got to the point where we wanted someone to verify that. Obviously, if it, it had to do with drug issues and it wasn't for public knowledge, it shouldn't be aired in a public setting. So we decided the sheriff would turn over, the sheriff decided, and we decided the sheriff would turn over the document to the state's attorney. The state's attorney would then decide whether or not it should be redacted and whether or not it was dealing with a drug issue or some other issue. That's where we stand right now. Um, I guess I'll turn to the state's attorney. Uh, did you, did the sheriff turn over the non-redacted email to you? Good morning. Uh, the sheriff did not, but I did receive it from from Captain Newen uh, with the Highway Patrol. Um, I have a copy of the pertinent portion of that email that was redacted. Um, I did some research, I believe, well, first of all, open records are subject to Chapter 44 of the Century Code. Um, 4404.18.7 covers records as it pertains to law enforcement. Um, 4404.18.7 sub, subsection 3 and subsection 4 cover records that contain intelligence and investigative information and explains that within those sections of the code. Um, while doing some research, I thought there may have been one sentence that probably should have been redacted. I've done some more recent research since then and, and actually spoken with uh, an attorney at the AG's office. Um, I don't believe that anything is confidential um, in this email. I have a copy for everyone. Um, could, could you give that to us now? So, so I, yeah, I can provide it to Sam and, and the commissioner. So we have so we can know what we're talking about. These are for they're for the commission. And Sam. Mm -hmm. Can you put that up there? Is this a public consumption office, maybe? maybe it's it's, it's, a, it's subject to open records. Do you have copies made of this? Um, Sam needs a copy. I think Mike should have a copy too, and I think there might be one that's shown. If not, we can make right, some. Right, but I some copies made for public. This is a public document. Yeah. Yeah. Give us just a minute here to read this.
Uh, Jimmy, you have the original redacted email? Oh uh, yeah, I can pull it up. Okay, and I want to I want to look at I, I. This is pretty stunning what's in here, but I also believe it's been altered. If you read the additional the the first email, I am emailing to request assistance with patrolling Briggs County Saturday night, April 13th. In the email from, which I assume is the original from the Iowa Patrol, I am emailing to request assistance with patrolling the area around Cooper Town Saturday night, April 15th. How can two emails supposedly of the same source have different language in there unless one of these has been altered? I'm not sure. I can pull the email up as I received it from Captain Newman. So, let's read this email and then we'll move on to the public discussion. As I mentioned, starting out, the original email says, I am emailing to request assistance with patrolling Griggs County Saturday night, April 13th. That is the original email that was, and then redacted from there. In this email from the Highway Patrol, that same sentence says, I am emailing to request assistance with patrolling the area around Cooperstown Saturday night, April 13th. How can there be a discrepancy in that sentence unless one of these has been altered? Then, here's the original email. Here's the whole email as sent from the Highway Patrol. Good afternoon. Keep in mind this was sent to a generic email address at the, at the Highway Patrol's Eastern Division. Good afternoon, I am the Sheriff in Griggs County. I have had the pleasure of meeting a few of the troopers assigned to Griggs County over the last few months. I am emailing to request assistance with patrolling the area around Cooperstown Saturday night, April 13th. The Masonic Temple is conducting their annual smoker event, in parentheses, which is all you can eat and all you can drink, buffet and open bar. There will be approximately 400 people in attendance for this event, which goes from approximately 1800, 6 o'clock, until 000, which is 12 o'clock. Most people then go to the bars in town. We've been having issues with our bars in town, over-serving, and are suspicious one bar may be serving after hours. If possible, I would like to see at least two troopers, which is, of course, different than what the sheriff told us previously, in the area Saturday night for this event. If you have any further questions, please feel con free to contact me. If you remember, the redacted portion of the email was supposed to have to do with drugs in Griggs County. The actual email had nothing to do with that, of course. It had to do with targeting a charity event, targeting the bars who can contribute a lot to charity via their gaming, full tabs and things like that. The most disturbing part is that this was orchestrated, arranged, carried out, then covered up and lied about. So, with that, we will open this up to the public comment questions portion of it. There's no need to stand up. There's no, unless you want, there's no need to come forward. There's no need to state your name. You don't have any obligation to answer or return or acknowledge any questions that anybody might ask. This is, this is for your own information and 
for the commissions as well. I think everybody wants an explanation from that guy. But I can't, I don't think we're going to get it though. Are we? Because I could call that a mile away. So I look at this email. Excuse, excuse me, excuse me. Read your name and your, and your. Oh, you just said well, I didn't have Yeah, to. well, I know, but you're jumping up and, and I mean. All right, my name is Doreen Ethman. Okay. I am from Binford. I am a resident okay. in Binford. I, so being, I got to, we got to clarify this. Are you speaking for the Sheriff's Department or as a citizen? As a citizen. Very good, go ahead. I am speaking as a citizen. But as I read this email, um, obviously there's people in here that are breaking rules. Um, the bar is saying that, they're stating that the bar, one of the bars is suspicious of over-serving and staying past open hours. That, to me, should be redacted. That should be open for public knowledge because that bar is being investigated, all right? Um, if the residents have an issue with they can't hold their liquor, they shouldn't be breaking the law. We have laws, we have rules for a reason. And why are we taking it out on this poor man and the sheriff's department when we should be standing up and supporting him? We shouldn't be breaking down just because Joe Blow down the street likes to drink all night long and he's worried about getting DUI. I believe on the night of the smoker, there were several, several taxi services or designated driver services that were open, that were should have been utilized by some of the drinkers. So why are you breaking him down and knocking him down? You're gonna end up with no police department, no sheriff's department, and you're gonna be stuck with the hybrid control patrolling this area, and you're gonna have no say in the matter of what happens. He is an elected official. He may have been appointed into this position at this time, but he still is an elected official, and he is still responsible for the people. And you know what? I feel safer knowing that he's patrolling the streets. There's probably been less crime that's been going on because he's more visible. I don't think it's fair that everybody else that drinks and wants to have a good time, you can still have that good time, but use common sense. Why are you knocking him down? That's not fair, truly. And John, I feel like you're picking on him. I really do. And this I, I, I want to know what beef do you this, have with him. This is a public forum. It is a public forum, but you've been knocking him down. I listened to the last commissioner meeting that went on for over three hours, mm -hmm. and you were knocking the sheriff's department down. And I don't think that's fair, because you guys are supposed to be supporting him, you, not knocking him down. Will you let me finish then? Answer the question. This is a public forum so that all options get to be overseen. Whatever your opinion is, whatever their opinion is, whatever our opinion is, the fact remains, that this targeted an event that is meant for charity. When it became, right. when it be, when it yeah, when it became evident that that wasn't popular with the population overall, documents were altered, information was, was withheld. You know, and they lied about it. Let me but, but, let me fin let me finish. And lies were told. So all that we're doing is to try to get to the truth. What happened? This email is what happened. His version of it is not what happened. The public gets to decide which version they want to agree with, and the public also gets to decide whether or not they want to continue with this type of law enforcement. And of course, there's gonna be people on both sides. The majority gets to decide. The election is the decision. That's how, this to, that's, that's how this is gonna take place. But I'm not sure why you wanna keep beating the dog dead. I mean, that's what you're doing. He lied to the people. Did he? He redacted his information because he felt it was pertinent to be it redacted. But you State's know, attorney, there's like the Shriner circuses. Hold one second. State's attorney. They're police. State's attorney Tennyson, what did the sheriff tell you was the redacted information originally? The sheriff did tell me it was due to drug. It was the redacted portion was drugs. Do you see any information about drugs in this? I see the bar, but how do we know there wasn't drugs involved? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> okay. Alcohol is a drug? I've always considered yeah, it. Yeah, alcohol is a drug. 
I, I, you, 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 can make your, you can make your argument. You don't have to convince me. You don't have to convince anybody else. You have to convince, well, the, public. I, I have to convince the public who is ultimately responsible for who they have to share. So we have the Shriner Circus. That is something that is definitely a nonprofit organization that's raising money for kids. Um, and they are policed. There's police walking in and out throughout the thing. There's police outside the Civic Center where they have these events. There's police all over the road. There's police everywhere. Every event I've been to, not necessarily in Cooperstown, but everywhere else, there is police. There's police at football games at MDSU, and there's alcohol involved. They're inside policing. They're outside policing. And you have a problem because you have one smoker event and it's being policed. Um, if you let, if you let people, the public comment here, I'm quite sure they're going to say they have no problem with policing, but they have a problem with this targeting and over-aggressive policing. And if you let them speak, I think they'll answer your question. But it's not any different than having the football games police. I, I think they'll answer your questions. The, the Shrine Circus has security from the Ralph Engelstead Arena. They don't have city police there. They do in Jamestown. Well, they don't in Grand Forks. In Jamestown, they do. Well, they pull 25 people over and give zero citations that have anything to do with drugs or alcohol. You say that they're going to get DUIs. There wasn't a single DUI given out that night, correct? Well, then why are you guys... No, nope. hold on, hold on. I'm going to answer every one of your questions. There wasn't a single DUI that went out that night. How long has it been since they got a DUI on, on a smoker night? I think people were saying that. Never. Years? Never. 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 Are you sure? Oh, gee. I mean, well, we, can we, look have, that. we have the public here. The, the clerk report says there ever been any DUIs or any accidents or rollovers or deaths on a night of a smoker. Does anybody know the truth? Let, let me put this back on course here. We're, of course, there's going to be a, a, a problems that take place at these events. This was, in the public's view, overzealous policing, then which led to a cover-up, which led to a lie, which led to the sheriff telling the public mistruths. All those erode the public confidence in the office. The public has to have confidence in not in their elected officials and especially in law enforcement. What happens now when law enforcement Sheriff Beaver has to get up and testify in a case where it's his word against someone else's word and he's already been caught at a lie. Is the state's attorney then going to feel confident bringing that case? Are the defense attorneys go are going to manipulate that to their advantage? The initial event that happened here was that the, the Shriners and the bars were targeted. That was bad. What happened afterwards just showed you what Sheriff Beaver thinks about the public. I can lie to them, I don't have to tell them, and they have to do what I say. And that's where we're at right now. And that's not me going after Sheriff Beaver. I am in charge of representing the 200 people that I represent in my district. I have to ask questions all the way from the most bizarre to the most benign. All those people have questions. Just because I ask, ask the question doesn't mean I believe what I said was the gospel truth is to, get a is to get a response from the person I asked the question of so that the taxpayers, the voting public, can make their own decision. It doesn't matter if you stand up and you think it's okay or someone stands up over here and thinks it's bad. What matters is when everybody gets together and votes to decide what was right and what was wrong, and that's how our system works. So in order to have people be able to make a decision, you have to have from all extremes. You have to have from this and this, and when it all comes together, we'll arrive at a, a decision. It's called democracy. So we can all get up and rant and rave, but it doesn't matter. None of us gets our way unless 51% of, of people believe with what I'm thinking, or you're thinking, or you're thinking. Have we asked the sheriff, Sheriff Beaver, did you lie in this email? Did you change the email in any way? I, I did alter some. Some wording in the email. Okay. And why did you do that? Yeah. Simply to just alleviate some of the focus from, from the emails. To get yourself out of a hole. I wasn't trying. 
I, I think I'd advise you not to question you anymore. This, yeah. this, is, this is a very small sample to what took place at all that entire evening. And, uh, this is a very small sample of what's going to happen to you. I admit my faults and my mistakes, but uh, that email is just a very, very small portion around what went into that evening and that entire weekend. And the fact that we're so focused on that is, at this point, just ridiculous. Boy, I, of so, course, so he's, he's no, taking, no, enough, enough no, now. I'm just saying, he's speak. taking responsibility that, yes, he did miswrite something. He right. is taking responsibility. Right, and the, the, the attorney general will find out about it, and it will go a lot further than just this room. I think that's what everybody's going to get mad about. You dug a big hole, and now I don't think you're going to get out of it. Because we know, like, do you think we're stupid? Do you think everybody here is just that ignorant that we're just going to let this slide? Do you think, and nobody from the state will hear about any of this. Well, they won't see this recording. They won't see any of that. They'll say, oh, no, this is just fine. This is, this is typical. The whole state's watching right now. I've already got information on this. So. I think it's a little bit bigger than just the county part right now. Okay, and I don't so think, I do not think the this is the general end. Isn't here? Why isn't the attorney general here? How can the news media I believe he here? may have some more things going on right now. Do you okay. think he might have some more things going on right now? Why isn't Valley News Live is going to get a call from me tonight? I'd love to see it. I really would. Yeah. Because I will. called him a couple weeks ago already. Okay. We're going to a different format here. This is obviously not working. If you want to speak, you can. We'll acknowledge you. We'll give you time to speak. Uh, you won't be interrupted by anybody else, and they won't interrupt you. Once you've said your piece, we're not. You're not the one to ask questions from the audience and question the sheriff, who you happen to be related to, by the way. And we're going to get this back to where it's a back and forth informational <coughs> meeting here rather than a so she said why don't you do this why don't you do that it does not prove anything this is the facts and the facts only this piece of this piece of paper this unredacted email is a fact the sheriff used to admit that he changed it changed it lied altered it it doesn't make any difference it's the same result so if you want to speak, please raise your hand. We'll acknowledge you and we'll move forward. Anybody? Gene Burkelson. Yep, Gene. I have got a question for the Mr. Tennyson. Does the Attorney General know about this yet? Do you think he will ever know about it? I would guess it will get to him at some point. Um, I like I said, I did speak. I. I've got contacts at the AG's office. Um, and I went a different direction. I, I was going to, my initial intention was to redact the portion um, about the bars. And I spoke with um, spoke with an assistant AG yesterday, last night, um, sent him a copy of the email, or a screenshot of the email, and, and um, he agreed that there was nothing confidential in there. So I, I would guess, I mean, this isn't a small deal. I'm guessing it's probably going to be all over. Um, this is a pretty big deal within the county or for all counties. It is a big deal. So I would guess at some point it's going to make it there. Okay. You uh, are not obligated to let the Attorney General know that it's your light? I don't believe so. Um, the, the Attorney General, I don't, I don't believe, is part of the licensing portion of, um, of law enforcement. Um, to be honest with you, I'm still, still trying to figure out how to handle this myself for, any, for what's going on. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess I can just leave it at that. I, I'm trying to wrap my head around the whole thing of how to handle it. All right, thank you. From here, Me? Anybody, anybody, I mean, this is, this, we're just trying to restore order here. We're not trying to silence anybody. <laughs> we welcome any comment.
Sheriff Beaver? We got nothing more to say. Thank you. I would like to add a couple words if I could. Yes. Just, I, I'd like to try to just answer. I appreciate your comment today and I appreciate your, your concerns you brought. Um, you did bring up some good points. Since the last meeting, I don't know how many of you I haven't spoken to the other commissioners. I wouldn't know how many calls I've received. I guess it's somewhere in the 40s to 50s, a number of people that have reached out to me. Um, I, will, I will admit that most of the calls I've gotten have been people that have been, um, I guess you want to call it against Sheriff Beaver and what happened, but there has been um, a fair few that have came to me with saying that we need law, we need, we need the against alcohol, um, if they don't say that if, if we, um, the, the letter of the law, that we need it to follow. And my response to them, and these phone calls have been quite lengthy with, these, with all of the people that I've had. And yes, we do, we are not looking for a law that's needed. We are not looking for the time of control to take this over. Um, people want to have faith in our law and our community. Um, John said in the last meeting that, you know, if, you, if, if you're gonna fit in and be a 20, 30 year sheriff, it's a fine line. You write too many tickets, you're not gonna get reelected. You don't write enough tickets, you're not gonna get reelected. I mean, you have to mold and blend into the community and be, um, it, it, it does take a little time. It, 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 it does. It does. Uh, I'm not saying that it doesn't. But, um, you know, we, for me, being, uh, I had folks that were on the fair board for 10 years. Uh, we went down and helped with them um, to the Derby, to the Mud Run, to the Bolarama. I mean, the, the amount of hours it takes to get just ready for that day. And you know, over policing, you know, round and round and round. People, you know, how much business is done meeting at the bar, having maybe maybe it's one or two beers, maybe they over drink, we don't know. But I mean, when you can't go and and you know, people are worried about it DUI. I mean, insurance is a crazy. Um, uh, people. They should be drinking. Well, but I mean, how many of this, I mean, we, who is it for us to decide? I mean, that, to, I'm there again, we're not looking for, for for people to be drinking and driving. But I would have to say that this is where I've gone with the people that are called in against drinking and driving. Do we have a problem? When we have a smoker that has 25 whole people arrested, or pulled out arrested, or pulled over, and not one drinking, not one. On the night of the smoker, where we were supposed to be 400 people, an open bar, an open food, and not one. You know, you asked, you said about the uh, taxi service that the people should have used. Well, obviously they did. People were bust in. People were, you know, but, you know, so I don't, if you look at the, the, the you know, the, 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 the whole scenario of what happened that night, you know, there, there's obviously people are responsible. They are drinking, but they are responsible. Um, you know, just because we're against drinking, like I said, if we are, I mean, that's, that's your prerogative. I, I don't have a problem with that. Um, but, you know, we take these little towns and we take the street towns. And I, I mean, I grew up having the street towns. I want my kids to have to go to the street towns. And if we take what happened at the smoker, if it happens at the street towns, and we take the two bars, and they, you know, chip in their money or however we get, you know, get the van. I did find out. I didn't believe that there was money for a van. I thought the bars were chipping in, but I did find out that the, the they, you know. But anyway, a van is five thousand bucks. I did find that out. And now the only way you're going to repay that van is you get people like yourself that come up here and they set a trailer up, they, you know, will take time, the electricity is done, there's fencing put up, you know, you get, you know, taco stand brought in and it's heated to meat and everything. And the only way they're going to recoup that money 
is hopefully responsibly is selling beer and people coming through the gate. Well, if we're over policed, people round and round and round, people, you know, they're like, oh, I mean, you know, we're not coming. And then that event is a boss. There's nothing but a couple 13, 14 year old kids out dancing, no bars being sell. The, you know, this taco guy, he won't come I, back I next really, year. I, I think that, to me, over policing would be having 20 officers here. But what, so I, what I've seen in street dance, I've seen them in Pittsburgh where <laughs> the cops sit at the end of the street, and there's been two or three sitting at the end of the street. That didn't stop people from drinking. Do you, would you think that over policing is when we have a whole county to patrol, but yet, and then we're, I'm just talking a random night that they will just drive up and down the alleyway and up and down Main, up and down the alley, up and down Main. And, uh, you know, I, I would venture to, you know, um, our gaming, there's a, you know, gaming is down $32,000 from last quarter to this, or from last year's quarter to this quarter. Well, and that's you know, not that's the last black of people showing up. No, I think it's more of because of the economy. The economy yeah. is, is really yeah. shitty. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. I'm not gambling as much as I used to because of the economy. So mm -hmm. I, I don't think that has anything to do In our main street, you know, our mayor was here last week and he said that Main Street, I mean, 8 o'clock at night, we're, it's, we're there's just so, I mean, um, you know, we, we need to please. We do. We, we need to be safe. We we got to keep citizens safe. Um, but I, I think there's other ways for you guys to raise money and um, bring businesses into town. It, I don't think policing has anything to do with how much money is spent. I, I think there's other ways to to get those gambling numbers up or to increase your numbers for the smoker. There's there's more ways to raise money than I mean, one item. You know, we, I agree with you, but, but we get, if you look across the board, I mean, we're we've part of the community. Yep. People work hard, you know. Look, what, what do we think the man on our home? Maybe it's less now, but to get that bull around up and go on, on this, you know. And if that is over police and people don't show up, it's, you know. There, there's lots of police in town when the program is going on. <laughs> yeah. And there's never been a problem. Um, you know, I, I, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, I just work at, you know, I just look at it in a small town. What, I don't care if it's the. I, I think you guys need to be looking at more as to how can we bring business into this community? <coughs> how, how can we make the community grow? Because so, that's where you're going to get the money increase. So let, let me answer that. We are trying to keep business in this community. What's driving business out of the community is this change in policing that we're experiencing. I forgot to enter into this discussion. I, we received a letter from, too late uh, for last meeting, we re received a letter from Danny Bakken, who's the president of Cooper Cell Municipal Gaming. And he says the gaming was down $32,000 for the first quarter of 24 over 2023. Um, that might be due to the bad economy, but I don't think the bad economy started three months ago. I think it started quite a bit ago. What did start three months ago was a new sheriff being put into place. So there's no factual, right. there's no factual, there's no factual information tying this $32,000 to the sheriff, but there certainly is an ability as it to that. And, and I understand, you got rid of Bob Hook, who was drinking one night and ran from the police and had an accident, and you kept him as sheriff. So I don't think this one little email is going to be a problem. We're, first of all, again, we are not deciding who becomes or who is the sheriff. The people get to decide that. The people need to have the information to make that decision. That's what this is about. And that's all it's about. So you can, you can argue every point, but ultimately the decision is going to be made for the long term on who's shared by the citizens of Rick 
and so on. For the short term, as this moves forward, it's going to be made by these five individuals. And <coughs> that's a question that has to be explored because we, we don't know what the vote is of these five individuals as to whether to keep the sheriff or move on. But we have to explore all options in order to make that decision. We're going to have to decide, we're going to have to get the state's attorney, and we're going to have to say, what happens if Rick Stone ends up with no sheriff? sheriff? What do we do? How do we fill in that gap? To the other side of it is nothing's done, and how do we then deal with, with the public and, and their demands for something to be done? This is not as easy as it seems, but it's been made a lot harder by the sheriff's actions in trying to cover this up trying to tell the public what they need rather than the public telling the county commission and the sheriff what they need and what they require because ultimately that's who's in charge. So if these if these public meetings seem punitive they're not, you have to allow all the facts to come out so that everybody involved can make a decision on what how to move forward. And without the facts you can't make a decision. So there's going to be things said in these meetings that somebody agrees with and somebody doesn't. But that's the way it is. That's the way our, that's the way our, whole, that's the way our whole democracy operates. So I, I just have a question because, you know, the only, I'm aware of the one where they pulled somebody over for their uh, license plate, like me and out. How many times prior to this did they have had that happen? Or the, is this something that's consistently is done, or is this like an overreach of an excuse to stop somebody and see? I'm not sure. There, so what, I guess what I can say is there are times that I know that there have been stops that that's been the basis of the stop in, in both counties, and I'm in mean, some states, two counties. I know there have been stops, but I. I couldn't give you a number or even an approximate number. I, I don't know, but I do know that it's it's been it's been the basis of stops. So is it been when there's been events that um, these stops are happening, or is it something that is consistently done anytime, any place? I mean, I I I think it's I think it's commonly used as a stop. I I couldn't, I, it would be unfair to me to say if it was consistently used in Greeks County or if it's used for events. <coughs> I, I don't keep track of that kind of statistics in, in my office. Um, I, I really, I couldn't answer that question fairly to anybody, um, to be honest with you. I, I can say in the, over a decade I've been county commissioner that this is the first time I've ever heard about it. That's I think I can relate that in prior law enforcement. That was never that was never um, to my knowledge been brought to my attention. It's been brought to my attention numerous times here. And that I, I do have to relate because I saw, I told I told him I would last last time we had this form the deputy put forward a situation, the only one situation where there's a breathalyzer given that night. And he said that they gave him the breathalyzer and he passed the breathalyzer and they let him go. Uh, that gentleman called me shortly after the tape, re the tape was available, the audio was available, and he wanted to set the record straight. Now I'm not gonna tell you his name, he's from all the town here. He was in town visiting his son. He was pulling up on the, 45, and he noticed all the lights, and before he could even uh, get his seatbelt fastened, he did get it fastened. He said that he got stopped. The deputy walked up to the car mm -hmm. and uh, told him he, his tabs were expired, license tabs. And he said, No, they're not expired. I, they're, they're half life. I, I know they're good. Well, asked him if he'd been drinking. He said he'd had one beer back into the car. Gave him a breathalyzer test, or field sobriety test, excuse me. Um, he passed, told him he was free to go, and with the party, the parting comment from the deputy was, you're free to go, but if I catch you up telling later on, you're going to jail. Hmm. Yeah. And 
the this gentleman, of course, took offense, but he was scared, and he, he, just, he went home. He was going home anyway. He called on Monday. He called the high, the state, the highway department, the licensing department, and it just well, maybe there's been a mistake, and he read them off his tag numbers. No, they said your, your tags are your tags have months left on before they expire. So that was he wanted us that straight, not set that straight, and and that was that was how that took place. Has there ever been a time that I can remember where 24 stops were made within a matter of hours uh, out in front of an event that was taking place? And, uh, yeah. um, but I think we all want to be safe, but we don't want somebody that has the attitude that gotcha. You know, we, we don't want anybody that's, you know, just focused on that. So is the deputy still here? And as, the, as the state's attorney stated last meeting, the commission really has no control over that deputy. Once uh, the funds have been allocated to the sheriff's department, the sheriff then is totally responsible for that deputy. I don't know that. Uh, the sheriff's gone, so this is my answer. That question, Jamie, I'm not 100 percent sure. I believe he's still here. Um, I did see on my way to town this morning. I did meet the other county patrol vehicle, so and I didn't see who was driving. So I guess it was Deputy Rispa. Yes. Will the North Dakota Sheriff's Association be hearing about this too? Because even if you were to leave Cooperstown or Griggs County. What's to say we don't go to Foster County, Nelson County, Dickey County, and we do the same thing? I think it's pretty apparent, especially when he's altering emails, he just said he did. <clears throat> For the last few years, we've had police corruption in the whole US, and now we have it down, all the way broken down to our actual individual county. That's pretty scary, and pretty eye-opening. <laughs> And it's like, maybe the buck should just stop there and we should just get rid of it and, you know, deal with it, deal with it and let them deal with it. Because I think, I think they would probably see this way more differently than we even can even imagine how they would look at it. Especially when he goes, yep, I altered the wording to make it sound a little different. Well, there's only one reason you're doing that. You're trying to get out of the lie. And now it's, it's like, okay, maybe, maybe he did make a mistake. We all make mistakes. We're all human. I've done it a lot. We've all done it. But now you're trying to not own up to your mistake. You're trying to get out of it. So now what else are you altering? You, your credibility is gone. You have no credibility from him anymore. What, what reports are you altering? What, you know, we have no idea. And I think that's where everybody's at. So I, that's what I'm saying. I think, and, and I, I think James right. I mean, I think this is going to be way higher than, this is a big deal. This isn't just, okay, run along. You either play along or you move along. No, this is not a good thing, especially when he sits there and admitted it and the whole state's watching it. I'm not sure he has his facts even right. I mean, how can he state in here that Approximately 400 people will be in attendance. I would guess over the years we've probably averaged maybe in the 280s, 290s. Well, that's a long ways from 400. That's 25% difference. But, but don't you usually try to sell about 400 tickets? Still, that correct? We do, but a lot of those tickets are sold just no, as I know. a giving. That's my point, though. It is, you know, that's what yeah. you're kind of basing yourself. But then he says that most of the people will be going to the bars. I bet the bar owners only wish that most of those people would be coming to the bars afterwards. And then the tie in any other activities that he thinks might be going on at the bars to our event, uh, that's not really fair to us either. We got nothing to do with what's going on in town. I mean, that's... The bars support us. If a few people go over to the bars, most of our people brought rides. I mean, they didn't come here. Like we said over the years, I have never heard of one alcohol related arrest or one accident 
from any of our events. So I just, I, why we would be picked out and targeted now doesn't make any sense. So next year when we go to sell those 400 tickets, how many of those people are going to say, well, well, we don't know if we want to go. That's what worries us. And the golf tournament. And the golf tournament. Well, we got an old building over here. And all we're trying to do is keep that thing up, keep our lodge going here. Uh, it gets used by some public, probably it should be used by a lot more. But, uh, you know, we're all here as volunteers. And, and we just want to be, I mean, we, we, we've been accepted by the community for, for years. And we just want to keep that going. No, I know that. At least I know if you started the smoker many years ago, it was to keep that place open. That's part yeah. of the reason you do that. So that's nice. It's a beautiful building. You know, yeah. most people have never been inside of it. They should. Right. On that one. So anyway. Yeah. The the intense police scrutiny that was applied that night to not only your event but to Cooperstown, Grace County in general, for the sake of getting drunk driving or alcohol, abuse of alcohol under control, proof the fact that the drinkers that came to that event and the drinkers that frequent the bars were responsible drinkers because there were no tickets written for drunk driving. Yeah. If, if there was a rash of drinking and driving, if there had been, and there was a rash of uh, over serving or the bars were open past 2 p.m. with five or six law enforcement officers present in the state, in the, in the county, that evening, don't you suppose that would have been exposed? Mm -hmm. It wasn't. So <laughs> the action here of targeting Masonic Temple was not a reaction to a problem. It was somehow rooted in, in the sheriff's belief that alcohol or the related activities of alcohol should not be allowed. That's the only, that's the only summation you can come to by this because their actions didn't produce any of the results that they were hoping for. And is, Again, it, is it a common practice for them to um, drive the alleys and write down license plates and times and I think Rod would have a, a better take on that. He's from he lives in Cooper so I wouldn't you, you know I wouldn't would hope not that, that that would not be a common practice, but you know that's one of the things that through the phone calls that I received, you know, that that's exactly and I witnessed it myself, yeah. you know, that that is what is happening. <coughs> um, you know, people are just, you know, um, there was an incident that were dealing with I was informed after the meeting last week that his brother um, has a, met, a disability from an accident and does not drink, has not drink, um, likes to go to the bar and play pool. He was left at the bar, made it a block, was pulled over and said he had a cracked mirror, the passenger mirror on his vehicle was cracked. Um, you know, questioned and you know, uh, when, 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 you're, when you're driving up and down Maine to the point where you can see that a mirror on a vehicle is cracked and pull over for it, um, th that's, you know, I, unacceptable. I don't, yeah, I don't agree with that. So, um, no, as far as, you know, the, the alleyways, I've witnessed it and I've had many phone calls. Um, I've been told of the uh, bands playing at the bars. Um, police looking in the windows, um, uh, from the uh, coyote hunt, you know, the, the night of that, and they you know, the done and over by 9.30 at night because it, it was just circling <coughs> the wagon, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you know it's the thing of it is I just believe that the majority of the people that told me just feel that we're over police, you know, in one area, not not the county itself, and we, we need our, our police, but we are just saturated into the drinking, and um, the, the fear from the, the general people that have called me, 
I've had people from not even in Griggs County. I mean, I've had people call me from Mayville. I've had people call me from, again from the Hope area. Um, is that you know you, we take everything from the Binford Rodeo <coughs> to the Myers to the Derby to the Mud Run. Um, you know, or, uh, they, they mentioned last meeting here that the the bikers weren't going to come in this year to the street or to the parade, the day of the parade, you know, that's a big day for us, you know. Um, Jerry's here and he, he's part of it and of the Knights of Columbus. That's money that is given to some of the community who needs it. Mm -hmm. Well, if, we, if our attendance is down and, you know, every year that attendance is growing and growing, we cook more and more food for it. And uh, I, I, there again, I'm a recipient, you know, my family, my son and my daughter, both of them are recipient of that money from the Knights of uh, Columbus. So, you know, the ultimate is that we have to do more good than harm. And quite frankly, with the overreach of, uh, we may not like drinking, but as long as it's done responsible, mm -hmm. um, and and uh, people are getting rides, and you know, um, we, we gotta, you know, we look where where the people are and where the money is at. And mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying that we need to turn a blind eye. That is not what this board is saying. And we're not saying that we, we, we promote drinking and driving. Absolutely not. But targeting is what we are against. Yeah, it's that gotcha you know, kind of mentality. And that not good. And, and, and the thing of it is, is that all the events in town whether it be from the Bolarama to the Shriners to the Knights of Columbus, <coughs> um, you know, the Derby, the, you know, they, the reason that barn down there is skinned and, and new windows in it is from the hard work of people in this community that have had a Derby and made the money and put back in uh, to the community. Um, you know, uh, we, we just need to keep growing, you know, and uh, volunteers. Um, they're, they're harder and harder. The, 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 the day and age we are in right now of this younger generation, they're not stepping up like the older generation did. And uh, you know, I don't think we need to give anybody an excuse not to join a group and, and uh, donate their time. Um, I, I'll say this one more time. I said it last meeting. My, my daughter is a Shriner baby, and when I asked the Shriners, how can I read? Hey, you how can people show up at our events? They, you know, they just said we need support. Yep. Um, and that's, that's what makes this whole thing go around. Yep. So this is kind of morphed into, uh, or trying to get pushed into a, either against drinking or for drinking, or against drinking and driving, for drinking and driving. We, we live in a society of free choice. Everybody knows that there's penalties for drinking and driving. Everybody makes that decision. We can't have the society in general making the decision that no, you can't drink or you can't go to the bar because you might jump in your car afterwards. That's not how our system is set up. Everybody knows that if you drink too much and you jump into your car and you drive away that you are subject to a penalty. That's the way it has to stay. We can't start imposing other people's norms on individuals. That's not how we're set up. So, of course, everybody believes that if a law has been broken and the law is severe enough and the public believes that that shouldn't be done, then the public doesn't dissent when they're punished for breaking that law. That's how this works. And when the public now feels that there's been an overreach and law enforcement is doing something it traditionally hasn't done because society was not in favor of doing it that way, that's when we have situations like this. And thankfully, there is a system in place and it will remain in place that allows the public to be the final choice. The public can call an election at any time and the public can dismiss a, a elected official, me, any of the commission, the sheriff, without any cause. If they decide they don't like that person, they don't have to be guilty of anything, they don't have to have caused any problems, the public can say, I don't want you around anymore, get out of here. 
That's the system we live under. That system has to be protected. That's why we are gathering information so everybody can make their own decision. To have us <coughs> stand up and tell the public, here's the way it's going to be, like it or, or leave it, is nonsense. Yep. This, will, this will get decided by an election. Unfortunately, for everybody involved, the commission more importantly, is we appointed this person. And now we have the responsibility in the interim to decide how do we protect or not protect the public from what's taking place here. It's going to be, as, as we've seen here, there's going to be people on both sides of it. There's going to be people that say, you guys way overstepped your bounds, or you didn't do enough. That's, that's the simulation, and that's what it's supposed to be. There's supposed to be accountability in the system. So, the commission is going to have to again explore all avenues from the from the most extreme, removing the sheriff and, the, and thusly the deputy, to doing nothing at all. And there's going to have to be a plan put in place for both of those contingencies. In order to have a plan put in place for those contingencies, we have to explore those contingencies, and that's going to involve asking some questions that people will want to hear asked and don't want to answer, and then it's going to come down to after we have all that information in place, the commission decided what to do. Because you can't decide what to do unless you know what the outcome of it, unless you know the consequences of your actions. So that's where we're at. The public should react on both sides of this. If, if, but it has to be a rational reaction that if you're trying to dissuade, if you're trying to sway the public one way or the other, the reaction has to be rational so that you can draw in 51% of the public you're trying to persuade. No matter what happens here, there's going to be people happy, there's going to be people sad. There's going to be people mad, and there's going to be people shaking their head. That's where we're at. So, John, where is this uh, email going to go to now? Is it pretty much a slap on the hand and we're done with it? Or is that something the commission's going to have to decide? Well, that's a good question, Gene. So, Judging from the response from this last meeting, there was, I'm not a YouTube guy or any of that, but I, I got a screenshot from a text where there had been 650 views of, if, or, of listening to this audio on right. YouTube of this commission meeting, where the, the previous high was, I think, 93 at one time in one meeting. So I think no matter what happens as far as the commission, the state's attorney, I think eventually this is going to make it to a higher, to a higher authority, okay. and 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 that can be done by an individual, which I assume it will be. That can be done as a commission in, in, is in totality. Mm -hmm. That can be done by the state's attorney or any combination of such. It can be done by an organization. Um, where does that lie? <coughs> is does this open the county up? For a civil suit, I don't know that. That's a, that's. Was there anything done illegal here? I don't know that. that that's a decision far beyond our pay grade. But those are all possibilities. Um, now I've got another thing. I read the paper this morning. Where Lisa Stafford wrote a big article, and I could have sworn there it said I'm not sure if it was the sheriff or the deputy that said I didn't know there was a smoker going on. It was the deputy that said that. Yeah. Well, why didn't the sheriff inform him if he's sending a message out here at noon or one o'clock in the afternoon? Why won't the deputy even inform the that? I think we're getting past the point. It would be if, if if you're trying to if you're trying to clear up all the inconsistencies in this thing, that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. Yeah. I I, I, I again we people are going to get the wrong information and read the Cooperstown paper versus this. You know, they're not going to get the whole story, so. Right. I'm, I'm sure this is going to end up. written by the sheriff. I understand that. So I'm sure this is going to end because up. Because the sheriff took the day off, and he requested I understand that, that, too. But when so he took the day off, why wasn't it passed down? I'm the sure it was. Yeah. And, and why did the deputy tell Lisa, or did he, Lisa screwed up? I mean, you know, it, it's not, I'm not going to say, you know, I'm pissed at everybody for doing something wrong. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, there's a lot of unclarity. Where the hell is, you know, 
Or is it true coming from? You know what it is. There's a, there's a lot of stuff going on, and it's going to take, this is going to take time for it all to be cleared up. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, I understand a lot of people are upset right now, but we just really ask for your patience. I know it's extremely difficult, but we just ask, like he said, whatever side you're on, try and be patient with us, and we will do what we can if it feels the right decision. <coughs> by, by, by as a commission, by law, everything else. Mm -hmm. So I understand there's a lot of unanswered questions, but this is going to take time. I have no problem with Mike whatsoever. I have no problem with the deputy whatsoever. Don't even really know him. What I hear, they're doing a pretty good job. But my problem is stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Normal citizen doesn't know anything now. Yeah. And they're sitting out here in the dark. No, the, the trust of the public is broken. Mm -hmm. and, and once once that happens with a politician's bad mouth, with law enforcement, that's almost unrecoverable. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I had to alter the documents to make a documentary that that's the answer. <laughs> I didn't make that up, we just heard it. Yeah. Yes, say, so, um, I don't know what you're going to do with them guys, but I'm going to be right in for sheriff. I have zero law enforcement, whatever, but I'm pretty sure I can smoke this guy. Because <laughs> I know a lot of people in Briggs County. Yep. Just saying, something's got to change, or you must well roll up Briggs County and throw it in the lake. And I, there's a lot of people. What, what is your name? Weir. Um, what? I can spell it out for you afterwards if you want. Just make sure you get it no, right. I want, it, I want the real name. Rodney Frederick. Thank you. You bet. Mine's Tyler Clayton. <coughs> if you talk to anybody, they're probably not going to know who you're talking about unless you say we the, the, the beauty of our system is just that, that the sheriff is an elected position. It doesn't require law enforcement <coughs> because the, the sheriff is supposed to reflect the attitude of law enforcement, of the, the community towards law enforcement, not individually. You can't say arrest him and don't arrest him, but the intensity of law enforcement. How, how intense are, is the enforcement? And that's why we allow somebody to be elected without any experience. From the, it has to be from the community. Everybody has to be from the community. And then the public gets to decide moving forward what level and intensity of law enforcement they get, or in the, in the instance here, if it's too intense, they get to back it up. Wonderful system. It, it, it's just we can't let it be. We, we have to let it play out. Uh, I do. I do accept some of the responsibility in the fact that I was the chairman when the sheriff was appointed. We were given the uh, the the. the Sheriff Beaver was, was brought to us by Sheriff Hook, who was leaving, and he was going in a couple of days, and he recommended Sheriff Beaver. We probably didn't do our due diligence to the extent that we should have. We were up against, no excuse, but we were up against not having a sheriff and having a candidate put in front of us that was brought forward by the previous sheriff. And as it turns out, after the fact, there, there are some things in Sheriff Beaver's past that would, should have raised some red flags. And so I, I do accept part of the responsibility for this. It, it, was, it, it wasn't all, with hindsight, I, that it should have been conducted. We, we should have taken a step back and, and conducted a more thorough <coughs> That's water under the bridge and all, but uh, again, some of the some of some of the responsibility for what happened here is is that is mine. John, I do I do think it's important to point out that training does need to be completed within a year if, if there's an in, individual that steps into that role as sheriff. Excuse me. There does have to be training to be sheriff. Absolutely, within yes. a year. I just think it's important to make sure that yeah. that, that the public is aware that that <coughs> that has to be done. Yeah. That you don't have to have training, but. Training does need to be completed, I think, within your Jamie? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So I but think that's important. That I think every law enforcement officer who hired within the last 
years of been trained. The, the deputy just has almost even not even completed his training yet. I think he did. He did this one. Yeah, well, my call the training is a little suspect. Um, so that that is the public knows or should know that there will be training involved with this, and that's fine. And the public is has that choice when they go to the ballot box and whether or not they're going to assume that financial liability of training. But that that's ongoing, not anyway. That's that's of not our concern here. Um, anything else? How are you going to inform the public of this? Well, rumor mill is just crazy in this stupid town. Uh, in terms of Zoom, so everybody can listen to it. Yeah, how many old people in this town know what the hell Zoom is? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of them can't even turn the computer on. Right. You know, well, then you, know. you better go help them. Okay. <laughs> hey, yeah. What well, time of the day should I do this? I mean, I I'm know. just probably as busy as you are. But, uh, I assume most of this stuff ends up on one of our social media sites somewhere. I'm not a member of that community, so I, I don't know. But, um, Gene, that's always been the problem with with failures in government is lack of public participation. Yeah. Thing, things happen because people don't pay, people don't get involved. Bad things happen because people don't get involved. And that question's been asked for a lot longer than you and I have been around. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the only time the public comes out is when something gets really away from the from the norm, and then that's what we're experiencing here. In the um, anybody? Lester? I need a motion to recess. We have a motion from Evelyn. Uh, to take a five-minute recess. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second by Zorn. All in favor, signify by say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Back in five minutes. <laughs> Okay, if we get back into session, we've got a few more discussions on this subject, trying to set some Trying to put in place some, some guidelines on how we're going to move forward with this and what would happen um, depending on what outcome the county commission comes to. So again, we have to decide all avenues. We have to have a, a, a road to go down via all avenues here. So we're going to have to ask some questions. See, the attorney's not here. Um, I'm going to step up for a minute. So. What's that? He'll be right back. He had to step up for a minute. He said he'd be right back. So. Okay. So at the at the minimum, we have the commission doing nothing, leaving this up to the public to decide the fate of, of the at the the fate of the sheriff at the election. At the other end of the spectrum, we have the commission removing the sheriff from duty but of course not being able to remove him from the election from the ballot so the election is still going to decide it and what weighs that decision is first of all what damage the public feels the sheriff can do to their way of life and the economy in the interim here is it more advantageous to leave the sheriff in place um, and move forward knowing that, that the public is not going to, going to be happy with that result, but that the result of not having the sheriff is worse. Is there a, a way to have the state have a replacement sheriff or some replacement until other people that could be hired and, until the election puts a sheriff in in new position. Um, all those questions have to be asked because you just can't say, "Well, here's what we're going to do," and then how do we do it? Uh, that has to be discussed with the 
by permission, I can't make the decision. Stephanie can't make the decision. Rod can't make it. Tram or Avril can't make it. It has to be it has to be the decision of us as a group. So right now, that's what I'm going to do. Is what what <laughs> without without deciding what you want to do because we can't do that unless we vote on it. Without deciding what you want to do. What are your <coughs> thoughts on if we move forward with any one decision, how do we then accommodate that decision? <coughs> so I, I guess we would start with at the least, if, if we do nothing, what, what, is, what is the result of doing nothing? I've been saying in the past, you know, a couple of weeks I've been talking to people, and I've been calling every lieutenant last time and, and had discussions with them. And and with the information we had last time, I I absolutely said I do not feel comfortable. I am I am representing my district, but I don't feel comfortable making a decision as to whether he stayed or left. Let the election and let the people do it. That's that was my outcome as far as what I told everybody when I visited with them. And and. Um, and it was more of a, this was a situation, it's a learning learning curve for Mike. Now he knows you know, what the people are as far as like, from here moving forward. He was overzealous, dial back on it, you know, read the county, what we do need. You know, you're young, you're new. But I will say the email kind of puts a grip on everything. So I feel I need to process a little bit more. I need to process more on this. So, so in other words, you were in favor of giving me the benefit of the doubt until it obvious that we were, we were misled, lied, and an email was tampered with. The, the two texts of these emails are different. Not, not in the fact that one's missing some of the text. They're different. These didn't come from the same source. It's, it's unfortunate. It's a very unfortunate that. He felt the need to try to cover himself and start owning it and try to try to move forward away from the, you know, by saying that he didn't ask for one when he would have better off just saying, I did, now I know, you know, but I, there's, there's a lot to process on this. I could not make an initial response, but I, you asked me before this meeting, and I have told people who I've talked to, people kept talking to me, I don't come to the decision, I want it to be. I want to let the public do it during the election time. Let the public elect it, because I didn't feel comfortable with that. But now with kind of the frail of the line, <clears throat> or the email, how my question is, it's so unfortunate because he's such a good guy, and that now with this, how can he, how can the people trust knowing that he did this? You know, everything he said, how can it be? And he's such a good guy, and he wants to do so good, and and he's new, and this hurts. This hurts a lot. But not not only does it hurt us as the the people of the community. I mean, let's think of the legal standpoint of this now. Where where are you ever going to put him in a court of law, knowing that he? You know, what can Jamie do with this? Right. I mean, if you take everything, all the feelings of us, and how uh, him being a good guy, how we feel, and how the public feels. If we cannot use him in a court of law on a, on a case because he's known to change emails and lie, um, but I mean, yeah, he's. When do they vote for new sheriff? June. No, in June. November. We got November. primaries in June and then election. So November. if we keep them, then I can close my bar down then because I won't have any business. Unfortunately, I mean that's how it is. It's gone down so much now that anybody want to buy a bar? <laughs> Turn it into a restaurant or something? Because so yeah, I feel like yeah. coming there for a month for burgers. What's so that? I feel like coming for your burgers. I yeah. Mean, from your standpoint, Dan Rod, so the fact that he he's now impeachable basically as a witness to anything because exactly the only the only thing that law enforcement has is that badge and the badge is what 
what makes them unimpeachable. The badge, the, the, given the badge of taking the oath of office because they are above trustworthy, they, are, they, they, they hold the public trust that they will do right. Once that's been broken, there's, I don't know how there's any going back to that, but maybe there is. You know, the, the first question that he's asked when he's in the sworn into court is, do you swear to tell the truth and the whole truth and nothing? <laughs> I, I think we need to move this to oh, we're a not going to make a special meeting. No, we're not yeah. going to make a now, but it's, it can be a special meeting. No, we're just setting the groundwork okay. so that at, at this next meeting, we know that whatever decision we make, we have a clear path to follow that out. Leave it from two weeks from the next agenda? Yeah, whatever it might be. But no, we're, we're right now we're discussing it because we need to decide how we're going to follow through with any decision. Yeah, John, what, what's our plan B, though? I mean, that's what we need to look at the long term here, you know. Let's say we do remove them, what do we do next for law enforcement? That's the thing that I feel like, like Ron said too, I had a lot of phone calls on both sides that we need law enforcement for the community, but we also need the other, other side of it with their targeting, you know. So it's kind of a two edged sword, you may call that. So we need something in place to figure this out, you know. A plan B, you know, we have to have something to cover it. You know. That's what we're trying to yeah, do. That's, so that's our plan. Here. That will that will involve reaching out to uh, different law enforcement agencies, probably these counties. That will that will involve reaching out to for people that would be qualified to take the job. Uh, whatever opportunities out there, we have to explore. Not that we, but we're kind of between a rock and a hard place. We can't offer anybody anything until we make the decision. We can't make the decision until we have the options. And I suppose a little bit more information. Could, can there is stuff out on his end too, legally wise too. I, mean, I just don't want to sit there keep them or remove them and then have a bomb that you guys did something that you were supposed to do. Because, uh, you guys as a new the commission I apologize. Oh the yeah, I, I mean you're not gonna get by a decision either way where someone's been not gonna say that we did the wrong thing. There, that, that would be a, yeah. and and there's gonna be all kinds of accusations leveled at us no matter which side this we're on. If we, I at least can't do the typical politician thing and throw my hands up and say I can't do nothing about this. You guys figure it out. That's not that's that's not going to happen. Um, so we're all going to have to take a stand on this, and we're all going to have to live with our decision. We're going all going to have to be prepared to defend our decision. And since sorry, I'll interrupt you. No, no, no. Since this is kind of to Jamie, I, I can't remember what your answer was. Since we appointed him in the position, can you unappoint somebody? So in, in the research that I've done, um, and I've consulted with some other attorneys as well, the research that I've done, um, an appointed person to an unexpired term can be terminated by the commission. Um, the reason that the person who is elected can't be is because at that point then this, the commission would be usurping the power of the people. Okay. At this point, the commission has put that person in place. I believe, and there's um, a couple AG's opinions that I've researched that, um, and, and uh, a, a Supreme Court case, that I believe that Grace County um, has the ability to terminate someone who is appointed to an unexpired term um, in, in an elected position. Then as commissioners, we have the power then to reappoint somebody. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's you, you have the power of appointment. <laughs> there's, there's, there's no way to run from some. <laughs> there, there's a, damned if you do, damned if you don't. The decision is, yeah. Right. I really don't. Here's a question that was asked. 
this was a phone call that came to me last night, late last night. <coughs> and I did, I told him I straight, I did not have an answer to this at all. I still, with Wiener running as sheriff, and what does it take for us to be able to appoint him? Can we appoint him? With all the training, I don't know. Uh, I think you can appoint someone the sheriff that's not trained and they have to they have to receive the training. I guess I don't look at that, but I I don't see why not. Um, I'll have but I will have to do some research. But I, mean, I think he just has to receive the training within a year, but I, I will look into that further. There might be other trained people available. I mean it, it, right. It was just a question that was asked and I, I did not and I haven't To, to, to the point over here, we're damned if we do or damned if we don't. I, I heard it another way. They, they love you today and hate you tomorrow. I'm living in the future. I am. Uh, I have people come to me and, and many phone calls on both sides, good and bad. You know, the whole hate the guy, the whole save the guy. You know, and and the things that were brought to me about saving, you know, the safe side, and it made sense. Um, the, the guys didn't do anything legally wrong because you know they were they were just policing. They weren't doing anything legally wrong. They were overzealous on the policing part and and on that, but legally they didn't do anything wrong. So on what grounds can you fire them? Um, and, or 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 whatever you know, let them go or whatever. But you know then now we have information brought to us that. With that email, and I yesterday actually yesterday I talked to somebody about it, and and I made the comments like, you know, this email is kind of this email is kind of obsolete. Like, what's the name of the email? What's going to come from it? Because you know they they heard the people, they know what they need to do, they just need to move forward and do what they need to do. They heard they were policing, they heard the people. Let them move forward and do their thing, and let the election take care of it. That was my standpoint. And and one person said, well, what if they lie in the email? And I was like, no, but. Well, not only lie. Their reaction was a lie. It was forced to death. Their they altered the email. Then they, they, they physically altered the email and presented it to the officer of the court. Yeah. I'm sure, Jimmy, is there some kind of legal pen penalty for that aspect? Well, I didn't catch that until today, so I, I don't know. That can be that. That can be. That's some research. That's some research. As well, um, yeah, I didn't catch that portion of the email had been edited until someone else got it. I will say they've been doing a great job when it comes to um, cases, criminal cases that have been coming through. The numbers are higher than than what they have been right, Kelly. The, I think the ones a lot of people are concerned about a lot of time are the ones that we've had. You know, there's, there's been a large up, uptick in felonies. I think we've had 10 so far this year. We had two last year. Um, we almost have more cases now than we did the entire year last year. And, and that could be attributed to lack of patrolling you know, or lack of crime. It, it could go both ways. You know, each year, there's, there's many factors that that can <laughs> Too, and as of right now, uh, 65% of our traffic citations this year have been conducted by highway patrol. The number of 85 event, I think it was 56 HP 29 for some Were we lawless before the show? Seemed things said, things were going pretty along pretty well. I mean, if you're in the business of law enforcement, of course, you want, you want to accelerate the business. <coughs> You can always, you can always find somebody breaking the law. There's a law, but some of the laws are broken, like uh, or things like that. Probably are loose and simple. I mean, we, we had, we had. I never got any complaints about lack of law enforcement, other than some of the drug issues. And I've certainly gotten a lot of like, complaints about this. Uh, again, as each, each individual gets to make that decision, and as a group, totally, the decision.
decision then becomes how we, how we conduct ourselves. I got a little food for thought for you here. Uh, the bottom line is it comes down to his integrity, and, and he, he showed that by lying and, and uh, rephrasing his email. So that's on him. But if you guys continue to let him sheriff this county, then that's going to reflect on your guys' integrity. Mm-hmm. So you've got to process that too. That's, uh, that's, that's why I took responsibility for what happened here. Is because I understand what goes forward is uh, there's no way for us to shrug this off and say the state the state says we can't do this or state says we can't do that or there's going to be a decision have to be made here mm-hmm. and yes. then you're going to have to start ducking because things are going to start getting thrown and, <laughs> and I wonder if you're in the position is he that he is in is there going to be any retaliation? to the bars or to other people if he's kept in that position. I thought that too. Very, very good, very good question. Um, and there's no really answer to it, but that, that question goes to integrity. And you know, we already have an answer on that. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. It's not an easy job for you guys to do, but it's pretty cut and dried in my opinion. Yep. What do I be in your position? I'll buy a wood because I can tear my one. <laughs> well, that's why they make the big bucks, so they make those decisions. So I, with that, I guess we need to explore individually our, the, what, what can happen. Um, we can reach out to people as far as who might be able to fill in part-time. If we go that, that route, we can go the other route and not do anything or something in between. Just remember when you're reaching out to people as far as our, our remedy to this, you can't guarantee or even give the possibility that uh, they could be hired or they could be brought on board. It's just all you can do is all be available. And any options are open, I would, I would think. I, I think from a financial standpoint of this, I think we have to throw, a rock, throw away what it's throw aside, well, although I'm, I'm, I'm heavily budget-minded, I think that the financial cost of getting, if we decide to have a different sheriff in place, I think the financial cost of that is far outweighed by the societal cost, both in money and reputation of, of the opposite. So look at the businesses that lost money because of this. It, directly related to taxpayers. It, would the taxpayers rather pay a little, pay more to have somebody in place part-time or would they rather keep what's going on? That's a question that each individual again has to answer. I think it's gonna cost the citizens of no matter how we look at it. Yeah. So what this is gonna come down to is, I would imagine a vote on whether to remove the sheriff. And if that vote passes, so be it. If that vote fails, then it's gonna to have to keep walking down the escalator to, to, to try to find a solution that is agreeable to us, but it's not us, of course. Each one of us represent a couple hundred people, and we have to make sure that, to the point brought up, that it, it, our decision reflects the wishes of the people we, we, are, we represent, or if it doesn't represent their wishes, we should go. If the next election, we should be thrown out. If we're not, if we're not, if we're not obeying what the people tell us to do, gone, indefensible. So, unless there's anything else on that issue, I think we'll and move on. Uh, the people move the proceedings to the. Oh, I just one last thing, Jamie. Question for you. Let's say we do, do do this, remove them. What can he come back and sue us for our civil liability against us? Jamie already said that he can leave them removed. Yeah, I know. Can he <coughs> sue us back or something? No, we're. Well, I, I mean, I, I can answer that easily. Yeah. Anybody can sue anybody. Yeah. Um, I mean, 
I could sue you today, Scott, and say that you're wearing the wrong color sweatshirt, whether or not you guys like right. that. Um, that and, and I mean, it, it sounds really silly for me to make that argument, but I mean, anybody can sue anybody. Um, whether whether a person wins, I don't know. Um, I, I I think we're on solid legal footing um, because, <coughs> like I said, you're not usurping the power of the people. Um, but yeah, of course we could be sued. We could be sued for for any amount of things. Um, but that doesn't mean that it. It would be a successful suit. No, that's fine. Yeah. Thanks, Jamie. And you're you're under the cloak of, of government here as far as suit goes. Yes. One last thought is uh, when you uh, questioned him, was he forthcoming? And do you assume? I know you don't put him under oath, but is he kind of under oath when you're doing the questioning? No. Okay. So, no, no, but, but he he obviously was the, the statements you made that were untrue were made in a public setting. So are you under oath? Well, actually, you kind of are because you're accountable to the people that, that, that elected you. So, yeah. 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 But when he presents a, a transcript to you that isn't lawful, I, I would think that would be the state's attorney's uh, findings or the for him to find out if that is being not being truthful to an elected body, he was an appointed man, and he's he's bringing that to an elected body. I mean, is that right there rough grounds for a removal? Well, I'm not I'm not a lawyer, of course, and, and but that, that is the question. So he presented now not only a redacted document but an altered document mm -hmm. to a an well, official of the court yeah. who then passed on that information to an elected body. Is is there uh, what is entailed in that? Is is that criminal? Is it civil? Or is it no? You can do that because I want to do it. And, and I, I think it's somewhere. I think it's somewhere in between there. I mean, the fact that, that the fact the redaction was arguable, and that got settled. It was arguable whether he could redact it or not. The state's attorney said no, he can't redact it. We got it. The changing of the tag, the changing of the text, the, the actual words in there. Uh, I don't know how in the world that's. I don't know how you get around that one. I, yeah. The mm -hmm. spell check didn't catch it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so I, what I can say about that is I I didn't see that. I my goal was to look at the redact, redacted portion of it. Um, that's what I was asked to do, and I frankly didn't catch it until someone else got it. I didn't look at, really pay that much attention to the rest of the email. Um, so um, I, I'm going to have to do some research as far as the implications of that. Um, and I guess, yeah, I guess we'll have to go from there on that. Well, what's your guys' trust level now on the board, or the commissioners here with you? Let, let's, they, they need this courtroom. Let's just take five minutes. Let's move over to the other, the other room here and continue it. They got to set this up for the real lawyers and the judges. Take that one, Jamie. I didn't say say the So I guess we don't have to go technically back into session because we were never out. <laughs> we just got up and walked away. Um, We're discussing what needs to be done. What, what, what do you, I, I mean, obviously we have to have another meeting. Is it another meeting next week on Monday? What is it, is it two weeks from now? When is it? Don't know. Um, there isn't, I don't think as far as making a decision on what the facts are on this, I don't think there's a whole lot of information left to bring forward. I think the information to bring forward is what are our options as far as, as how do we comply with whatever decision we make? Does that sound correct? Yes. Yeah. I think we'll let Jamie do his research as far as the, the stuff we need to know. <coughs> From the public, anything else? Any, any parting thoughts? 
if if nothing is done until election and if or whatever he gets reelected, then what are you going to do with all the problems we've had now? I can answer it from the end of the question. If he gets reelected, you guys did it. <laughs> it wasn't us. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. From what? What? Right. Yeah, from right. from from now until then, that is what we're trying to explore to yeah. what to do here. But ultimately, no matter what we do between now and the election, he is on the ballot unless he removes himself. How many? Can, 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 he can cannot can remove, remove himself. himself. No. He can't pull his name off the ballot. He can. He can cease to. He can let it be known publicly that he's not, not a candidate. But no, correctly, he can't technically take his name off the ballot. How many people go on the ballot? Say, winner's going to run and gets to go on the ballot. Is there more than one that gets to go on the ballot, or um, he would oh. have to? Um, anybody that runs as a write-in would have to get at least fourteen votes um, to be in um, to get their name on the ballot. Um, the top mm -hmm. two go on for November. The willing top two go on. Right. Yeah. Yep. So okay. the, the 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 top two highest voter getters. I will then call them. You know, you got the the number or whatever do you approve not you know and then the top two would go on so he's on the ballot no matter what if there's 15 write-in voters she would contact the one with the most votes if that person decided that he'd go on the ballot to be done if not it would go to the next most votes the next most until someone finally accepted it but if if two of the write-ins get more than even mike yes. then the two highest voter getters would go on and then mike would be on yeah Okay. <clears throat> That's why the primary is there. Correct. And none of the and none of the above qualifies as, as a vote against the person on the ballot, correct? Say that again. None of the above. If you if you if you write none and, and put and put in a circle. You have to you have to fill in the circle for the write in to count. But if you say none of the above, I mean, just yep. don't vote. <laughs> no, no, but none. You can cast a vote, right? And it's a vote not going to the to the person on the ballot, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So whatever we do is a short term fix. It's up to you guys to go from there. Anything else? Yeah. Yeah, nothing. All right. You're welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. It won't be nearly as as enlightening as what you just took place, but thank you all for coming. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you guys. I go go and we'll Jody's got some extra car models. Okay. And yeah. and there we'll either have a special meeting or we'll the next meeting this topic will be on the meeting again. On the agenda. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I'm all so forget about it. I need to make up some money, people. No, I'm just <laughs> okay, we're done. We're done with that. Fairground property? What do we? We don't have anything on that. Do, is there any? Did Jamie no. talk to the lawyer and make any decisions on that yet? No. No. So we're still waiting for Jamie to get talk with the attorney. Jamie is the attorney. No, no, I mean, the attorney. The attorney with, for the fair board. Oh, I think he talked with him. I, th I think he's. I think he's looking to. Well, I don't know what Jamie. I don't know what he's doing. But we don't have his information, so it, this is I think they need to make a few changes issue. on vocabulary on okay. their on their thing. So we'll move that to the next agenda. What is it? The fair ground. Uh, fair ground. Property. For fair uh, Cooper Municipal Board information we already uh, that got brought up that was uh, the notice from Danny Mock and that the four board the municipal board had lost or received thirty two thousand dollars less in the first quarter of twenty four than in twenty three. Any questions on that? Tax abatement. Um, tax abatement. I tried to get a hold of the township and I could not get back a hold of them. Um, uh, further information, this um, tax abatement was sent out by the treasurer's office. Um, so she helped 
fill this out for them. Um, so that's okay. so. So this has to do with a trailer house. Yeah, I say that. What is the story on this? I'm trying to figure this. Out. I, I got it. <laughs> I, was gonna say, I, I think I got. I got the initial part of it too. I think the phone call came to us. I think you had called the office. Yeah, so yes. this this trailer house is not eligible for an abatement. The land underneath the trailer house is not eligible. It, it di didn't didn't possess the value of the trailer house. The trailer house is has a title on it. The, it has to be titled with the state, and the state passes on the value of the trailer house to the county, and the county taxes it. The trailer house was sold. So the trailer house is gone. Yeah. New, and who else is built on that spot? Is that correct? That's a separate issue. Oh, totally. Okay. The trailer house is gone. We keep charging tax on the trailer house. Mm -hmm. That no longer exists. That no longer exists. That we have no way of collecting any tax on. If if she says well, I'm not paying the tax on the trailer house because I sold it, what are we going to do? Mm -hmm. You can't tax a property underneath it because that's not how the system works. So this yeah. abatement. Listing the physical land is of no use to us because we can't. There can't be an attachment to that land because there was never, there was never a structure sitting on that land that was taxable. And the ninety-four thousand dollars was the price of the trailer house, not the price of the land plus improvements. <coughs> so a delinquent tax to the trailer house does not reflect upon the upon the physical property here. Right. I think what had happened is she had sold it and it moved. So the, the process of, because I reached out to a tax director friend, because uh, the, the tax director that handles the mobile homes and taxing and things like that. Um, so I reached out to her and said, what do we do? Because uh, she had sold it and moved it. But the proper process is you have to come in, get a moving per from, permit from the county, the tax director or the treasurer signs off that the taxes are paid, you then can move it. So the problem was it's already been sold, it's already been paid, it was moved, and then the county was, so I think she was trying to abate that tax amount that she paid for the trailer, not the land, right? Because mm -hmm. yeah, if, if you look things. at the tax, the abatement, it's only for mobile home, not for the land. It's just for the mobile home. The so land would still be taxed. So when she technically, so the mobile home was already gone, but the county wasn't informed that it was moved. So each, the next year, it was assessed for those taxes. So that portion, I think she paid a small portion. Isn't that what she's trying to abate? Mm -hmm. So that should be approved, Because 23 right? and 24 should be abated because there is no mobile home on that. So they should Well, abated. not on that. There's no mobile home. So from us. if she presented a bill of sale or that says here's when it was sold, that's when the, that's when the, tax that Griggs County assesses against that property should stop. Yeah, and I think, did she work with <clears> you? And do, I thought, I think there was a conversation, and I thought she signed paperwork that said, didn't you have a form? Because she idea? still owes, so the reason it wasn't ever taken off the tax rolls is because she did pay, I don't remember the exact amount, I might have written it down, but there was still, yeah, she paid, it was, the total amount due was $760.49, and she paid, Six hundred thirty-three dollars and seventy-five cents on two fourteen of twenty twenty-three. So there was still a small amount owing. I don't know why she didn't pay it in full. I don't remember, but I was trying to get that portion paid so that then we can get her. Well, I mean, so well, we can abate it either how way. How could she? What does she need to do to to not have it? Does she need to get reassessed? How do you fix that so she, it won't be on the next? You just take it off. It was sold. I mean, it was no different than yeah. if it burnt down or or right. or, or so was destroyed. The purpose of that moving permit. Yeah. So the um, tax director that I reached out to, she said they're supposed to acquire the moving permit mm -hmm. that gives them the permission to move it. But th these things happen. Sometimes people just aren't aware of that. Right. So then they just have to bring proof in that they sold it, or you know, she said if somebody has GIS, they can look to see you know if it's been yeah. moved. But I don't think there was any question on whether it was truthful or not. It was just a procedural thing. And I am only involved just because it yeah. came to me and I just reached out and to the por And the portion <laughs> that she paid... You know people. I have nothing else with The portion that she paid was up to the point at where it was sold. That's why it, was, it wasn't It was sold at the end of the year. It was sold, so she paid up to the up to the date of sale. 
of her possession. Current, so mobile homes are assessed in the beginning of the year and they have to be paid within that year. Yeah. So she was current. It rolled yeah. over to the new year, yeah. it wasn't removed, so then she got assessed. And, and then she why. paid I, a portion what? of it, but the portion that's due, you, if they abated that, you could just she apply moved that it to the land. And it was purchased and moved in 2022, but she didn't let anyone know, so that's why a tax statement still went out to her for 23 because it's being done in that year for oh. mobile homes. So I don't know why the township denied it. That has nothing to do with me. I didn't deny it. I just filled out the paperwork. Gave it yeah. to the auditor's office and they sent it off to the town. So technically, so they should she, they should abate it. Really absolutely. It, yeah. Well, abatement isn't abatement isn't the uh, the actual way to do this. Let's just abate this, get it off the books, yeah, exactly. and because we have no recourse, if she doesn't want to pay that, we, it doesn't matter, and she doesn't owe it. So let's just get this abatement done, get it off the books, lessen your load, lessen everybody's load, yeah, make every. For once, government can do something to make everybody happy. I make a motion for the abatement. There we go. Second that. <laughs> you probably all want to second that. It's all for the by commission on the sixth. Yeah. Uh, motion by Edland, second by Zorn to abate the Marcy Gilbertson uh, it's just abatement on. application, uh, mobile home abatement, and. This will stand as zero balance and we're done with this, correct? And this is just literally for the trailer. This isn't the property just for the value of the trailer that was removed. Yeah. Yep. No, the, pro the, the property the property was never the property yeah. was yeah. never Yeah. Twenty three and twenty four. Okay, because that's what's twenty three has a small amount going and then twenty four. Yeah, the the property was never ever valued for the value of the trailer. It it can't be. They're two separate things. They're two yeah. yeah the and, mobile yeah. home stands on its own because I, I Way million years ago as a tax director, and that was something that we did. It, you know, they get assessed. It's different than it's not a year behind like we are. It's assessed in that year, and you have to pay it within that year. And so, yeah, and 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 being that it's technically a separate structure, correct? Yes, the only ones they can apply to affix the trailer home to the property. And that's something it's a that basement. we do in our office. Yeah. They have to affix it, and then if then the county has recourse. If they don't, you know, if they, obviously it's attached, it's a fix, it's built differently, and you know, so that's where it becomes a problem with trailer homes is if they don't pay their taxes, or they can just move well, the trailer, move and, the trailer. It, and you're the county stuck with the unpaid. Well, it, it has happened before, and that's why we don't tax buildings, the building is not taxed, the value of the land is taxed because of the building sitting on it. So your house is not taxed, it's the value of the land. Well, but mobile homes are different though. That, that's what I mean. That's why it is that yeah. way. Mobile homes yeah. are, are actually a licensed piece of piece of equipment right. and they're taxed <clears throat> the uh, the purchase price and then a depreciation yeah. schedule Every going year forward. There's a depreciation scale. So that is something that I would, you know, you can move the building here. but you can't move the land type of deal. Yeah. And if you you know, just something to think about too, if you're talking about tax structure, that is something that I don't know if it's been done, and the, the, those that own the mobile homes do preserve. That is something that you do every year. You have a scale. I think it's from the state. Yeah. You depreciate those mobile homes each year, so those, you know, they, they don't increase in value. So that's something to. Yeah, they de they decrease actually. So yeah. we have a motion on the table to uh, abate the taxes for Marcy Gilbertson on a trailer house. Uh, for 2023 and 20, 2024. 23 yep. and 2024. Uh, all in favor, signify by, by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Abated. Sales ratio study. Oh, I was just wanting to know the update on it. Have you heard anything? On no. The sales ratio study. Where are we? We sent an email um, off to Shelley. I think Shelley. I, th I think Jamie's in, in the process of doing that. I bet he's been overwhelmed with some other stuff. So. He's got, he's we'll put it on. The, he's got a kind of a full plate. Right put an agenda okay. for. Thank you. <laughs> put an agenda so for next meeting. To put that on the agenda. That That's was okay. my deal. It was just um, an update. Uh, yeah, I don't have a thing. Um, okay. Yeah. Sales ratio study. Okay. So that we'll have it on there. County audit. Um, <clears throat> so the state um, declined our, didn't approve our audit again, um, and so you have the information in front of you as to why they didn't. Um, Harold did reach out to them, um, and then you do have that email there as well of the correspondence between 
um, Dan Cox and um, Harold Rotunda. Um, we do have a bill from the state auditor's office for $750. That is That was not included in the invoices that you guys approved earlier. Um, yeah, I was reading through this. I was reading through this and Harold gave his reasonings. He gave his three reasonings and then he gave his three more reasonings. I don't know if you guys get a chance to read this. I did a little bit this morning. So Harold gave his reasonings um, and then the state auditors gave their reasonings, you know, to counter Harold's reasonings and then gave their general accounting standards with GASB statement number 61 amends and more or less in con what they're saying is that there's three parts to to um, that standard that you need to meet one of the three in order to that you should be on the financials. This is what he's saying here. And according to Dan, we meet all three. So that it should be on there. It so they feel it should be on there according to their general accounting practice standards practice statement sixty one something. I want to get this through. I want to get our audits done. We haven't had an audit completed since two thousand seventeen. Yes we have finalized. The state the state accepting or denying the audit makes no difference. We completed our audits. There was no there was no financial concerns with it. It's a practice concern that they've let go for the last twelve years. They agreed with us prior. Now they don't agree with us. We just keep doing the audits, turning them in. So, well, I I feel we should just put it on there so we can get it go, to going through. We so can't. we can get it. We'll be in violation of the lease agreement. If you we, lease your if you lease your car, can you claim it on your financial statement? You can't. But according to here, according to their general accounting practice standards, it does qualify to be on there, and it should be on there. No, only if the lease the lease agreement specifically does not give us ownership. We cannot put something onto our financial statement we don't own. We won't own it. The minute we own it, when the loan is paid off, the lease is paid off, we will put it onto our system. We do not own it, and we would be in violation of the lease agreement. The whole purpose of the lease agreement was to get around what the people said. You can't build the building and own it. Well, how do we try to fix? How do we try to fix this? Or can't we? It, we, we don't do anything. We just we just have Harold do the audits, yeah. turn them in. I get rejected. I wanted to not get rejected, so you know I I don't I don't feel we'll be in violation of the lease, especially if the auditors are saying that we are not. They haven't even looked at the lease. That that we are not in violation of it. So we are we are now leasing this building from the building authority. That's correct. Right. And Until it's paid off, right? That's correct. And the county gives the building authority the money to make the payments? The county gives the, the building authority the lease payment. The lead, yep. the, and the building authority takes the lease payment and makes yep. the lease payment. So if you lease your truck, do you get to put it on your financial statement? No. And of course not. The, the building authority is responsible for maintaining that separation. If we go pay this, the building authority is obligated to bring legal action against the county against the county for for violating the lease agreement. Is there any way we can like talk with the uh, auditor and be like, okay, so you know, here's our position and whatever else? We have. Well, oh, you've done that in the past. What's the penalty for us? All it says is we have to send our audits to the state. Yeah. We sent our audits to the state. There, there's no financial problem. They haven't said, well, you're missing X dollars here, or X dollars here. They've got into a squabble on how, on. No, but I just didn't know if there was a way we could meet with her or if they met in the, in the past to clarify what's going on. That, what, that's why I'm curious. About. We've clarified it. We're right, they're wrong. What part? <laughs> it's hard to argue with an auditor, though. I'm just saying that's their, <laughs> that's their thing. <laughs> But, but he's not. A, first of all, they're using general accounting practices for business, not government. This says government accounting standard <laughs> statements that they're using on here. I don't know. Did you guys read this? And feel free to call the. You guys didn't read this at all. No, I didn't. Chance. I didn't. Um, I, I was unaware of it, which I apologize. That's that's on my end. 
but that's that's why I'm kind of curious on like okay I I mean I understand that you guys have been turning and they've been denied I just it's like okay so what's what's the bottom have we have we met with them have have we met with them and they still said well too bad you still got to do this or they they, they don't say they just keep doing they just keep denying it in the in the email here it states we believe you're well there are three options as they are one is put it in there as a blended company component which I'm about it because they show enough to say it's a blended component. Um, and there is another option. If the county still chooses to leave out all the components for the county's statements, then you will need to do the following. And then add an additional modified opinion to this um, to take it off. You can, you can do that. I just think it's a lot of work for Harold if, to do that. But Harold will do whatever. He's willing to do whatever we ask him to do. I mean, he sees both sides. He says it used to be in there until it was it was represented until 2000 and I can't remember what year he told me. Um, it was actually in their uh, financials until one year when the board said don't put it in there anymore, the commissions. So then it wasn't put in there. And then when the state came to do the audit, that's when they noticed it. So then the state said, hey, we know there's a blended entity here that, that matches their blended entity components, you know, statements. So they say put it back in there again that's wrong however he is he is stating I, you know i can't it's wrong i can't argue when they're giving us the, the information i've been around since this took place i know what happened the state has never right. looked at the lease agreement between the county and the building authority ever they have ignored that the whole purpose of that lease agreement was because the people said county you cannot own that building we do not give you permission to take our tax dollars through a loophole they got this lease agreement in place the building authority owns that building in 100 percent until the payments are made at that point it's sold to the county for one dollar then it will go on to this statement if that is violated and the building authority doesn't maintain the integrity of that lease agreement they are obligated to go after the county you'll force the building authority to sue the county over not maintaining their interest in the building. What is it paid off by way? Eight, <laughs> Eight more years. Yeah. So we're halfway through. Pretty yeah. Much. There's, there's, this is so cut and dried. And if there's no teeth in that, what are they going to do? Are they going to come and say, argue this point? And when it's, here's the lease agreement, here's what we have to do. Are they going to come and well, you got to pay the money back that 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 we found delinquent in the audit. There is no money delinquent in the audit. This is not a this is not a money issue. This is a policy issue, and it's not even a policy issue. It's a contract issue. Well, the original contract would have written up would have to have a language in it. It does. Yeah. It would be like you trying to take a truck that you leased and go and go mortgage it for another vehicle. The, the truck is protected because of the of the agreements pri prior. Well, we need to take some sort of action. And number three here is that if you, or number two, it leaves out, the report still leaves out the blended component unit. You need the following. So Harold is looking for some, some guidance as to which one to do so we can get something approved. We can put it as an adverse opinion. He would just need to follow the rules here for the adverse opinion if you guys <coughs> feel that that it shouldn't be in there because John says it's according against our lease. But I John do, doesn't say it, the lease says it. I do I I do want I want to give Harold guidance to move forward on this instead of just sitting there not having an audit done. Yeah. So do you want you want to go ahead and have him put it in as a adverse opinion as a blended entity and have Harold move forward with that so we can get it done? <coughs> it's always been an adverse opinion. We've done that many times. We, we just disagree to we always just, disagree and that's what happens. It currently is not in there as an adverse opinion. What is it in there as then? How, how is it? It's not in there. Oh. It currently is not in there. And Harold will put it in as an adverse opinion if we want it to be. And that's not going to violate any lease laws or anything? That's what I'm worried about. 
No. I, but what how do you mean? No, we how don't. Could, how can we put it in there if we don't own it? Can't. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm worried about violating a lease, like you said. And again, well, at, the same, was, and at the same time, I mean, you know, obviously, you know, this is way down, way before my time, you yep. guys' time, everything else. And I understand that. It's just, if, you know, audits getting rejected, I mean, if we don't get penalized for it, obviously it's not a big deal. But at the same time, is this is a fix that we got to figure out. I think we should fix it. But again, what's the legal way to do this? And from what I understand, is we can't violate the lease, but at the same time, you know, like, so what's what's well, and, again also you know what's Jamie going to take on this too? because he's he's obviously the one the, our legal guidance on this. I'm not saying you're right or wrong. I'm just saying that you know this, this we we, ha is. we have to do this in a legal way, and if if we don't, we can get sued. We don't want that either. Ty, the the fact that this argument's been taking place since that building this building was built and nothing's happened is proof that the lease holds water here. But anyway, you can do whatever you want, but we can't just say, go ahead, Harold, go ahead and do it. We, well, have, we, to, we have to have Harold bring us what he's going to do, what we want done, and then to have, that has to then be contrasted against the, the, what is in the lease agreement and decide if what we do is actually legal to do. Again, you can't take your house and mortgage it for another house if you don't own the house. That's what this amounts to. <clears throat> and as far as penalties from the state goes, You've seen this, the teeth the state has when it comes to the tax department, haven't you? They're toothless. They just try to push you around. They don't do nothing. We're not accountable to them. We haven't broken any financial laws. We did not fail an audit. There's no money missing. Everything is perfect. It's a, it's a difference of opinion on how a piece of property that we don't own should be listed on our financial statement. And an adverse opinion means you don't put it on your financials. It's just a side note on it, <coughs> stating that the auditors think they should be on there, but we're saying differently, and that yep. it's just going to be there. It's an adverse opinion. Nothing legal can happen with that. That's right. And and we've had Steph, we've had that adverse opinion every time it's come up. Every time that's what we've settled upon, and they just keep okay, trying so then to come back. Let's make a motion to, for Harold to go ahead and put the adverse opinion on the financials. I make a motion. I make a motion to have Harold put the adverse opinion on the financials so that we can get it approved. We have a motion by Stephanie to put the adverse opinion on the financials until we can get it approved. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second by Tranby in the discussion part of this. That's fine, but Harold doesn't get to turn that in until we get we to see, see it. it. Right. and it goes through a legal scrutiny on whether or not that is correct. Yeah. I guess, yeah. Yeah, I think this thing go on for how many years? <coughs> well, we didn't send one in until like, two years ago. When did we finally send one in? We have 2018 that wasn't sent in when it was supposed to have been. 17 or 18. We're in 18 now. We need 18, 19, 20, yeah. 21, 22, and 23. And we're going to have this housing authority is going to be the hang up to have them all approved by the state for forever. So they, they don't have to be approved. They just have to be sent in. What the state does with them after the fact is then puts the ball in our in our court. We have a we have a motion on the table. And if you want to give Harold Cart Blanche to send this in, uh, that's what's going to happen. But we have to. That would be irresponsible to not look at the to not look at the statement that Harold's going to turn in for well, we, us. But well, we need to look at it first before he sends yes. it in, correct? Yep. That's not what this motion is about. That's what I want. Okay. Yep. That's not what this motion is about. Okay. This motion is about having Harold turn in <coughs> the statement to the state. It has, says nothing about it says nothing about us reviewing it or having it reviewed legally. Can we we can let this die and then... No, now, we got, now we got to vote on it. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Aye. 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 Failed. How about we start putting things on the agenda, out in the open, debating them in the open, rather than blurting out motions without anybody being prepared or anybody knowing the consequence of what's going to happen from now on. Now, if you want to put this into a motion, you can, as long as Harold prepares it, we review it and legal reviews it, and then we'll vote on it again. 
I just want to state, I, from what I'm gathering on this, and I've bought and sold and leased a pile of equipment, and I've, you know, you, what you cannot write taxes off on something you don't own that you make a lease payment on. So I, as of right now, I'm going to say that with the building authority stands, you know, and I, you know, unless there's information that would show me otherwise, but you know, I, I've sat down with my, the most I've ever been able to write off is the interest of the payment. That's right. The adverse opinion is fine. Steph's got a, a point with that. Let's, the adverse opinion, but let's look at the adverse opinion okay. first and then decide whether or not that, what's what we want to turn in. So the motion would be a motion for Harold to prepare an adverse opinion for to our... The, to the council. Yes, for our approval. So, yes, I'll make that motion. Motion by Avril to for, have Harold prepare an adverse opinion to present it to the council for approval. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Tran and be all in favor signify by saying aye. Who, who made the motion? I did. Avril. Okay, thank you. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passed. Courthouse, old and new. The bricks are falling off that one. He's putting a fence up. That's right. It's up right now. I see you. I've been asked about the fence. Why is there a fence up? There's a bricks falling off. Bricks. Mm -hmm. Yep. So my question on that then is, are we going to get dinged for uh, lack of repair or lack of whatever else on that? Somebody, if somebody gets smoked by a big brook, you mean it's just like... <laughs> well, not just that, but I mean, is, I, I mean, I could be wrong about this, but is it part of the, uh, uh, the, the grant that we have to keep that in repair, keep that in within a standing structure? So is this violating that? I think the phrase is demolition by neglect. Mm -hmm. So is a brick falling off to demolish it? Don't know. It, it's such a vague... It's such a vague terminology. And that's what I'm, I just don't want to, like, oh, you neglected it, you have to pay this back, you know what I mean? Or whatever else. I didn't know if that's going to violate any of that agreement that we that they made in the past. Well, we're going to have to find that out one way or the other because <laughs> we're never going to get permission to tear it down. And so it's just going to keep sitting there and deteriorating and deteriorating and deteriorating. And so this, this is one of those things where... Oh, like all this, we don't have anybody looking over our shoulder telling us what to do, and and we shouldn't shrug our responsibility. It's our responsibility for all this stuff. Is is it is in bad shape? Should it be torn down? Yeah, it should be. What happens if we do? We pay back a million dollars. What happens if we let it deteriorate? What happens then? Common sense tells tells you that they're not going to come in and take the million dollars away from you because you can't maintain it. Common sense probably also tells you if we tear it down, had the money to tear it down, that they're probably going to come in and take the million dollars away from you. And the only way we can take it down is if we finish update the historic. Yeah. Because right now it's been last time it's been updated was 1979. 1979. Yeah. And so you have to update that, and that costs money, mm -hmm. which of course you have to get a hold of a historical yeah. architect <laughs> to fill that out and update it. Once that's updated into them, we've got one part of the three done. Once that is updated, given to them, they'll review it, you know, and, and they'll see the deterioration or whatever, and, 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 and then they get to make the choice whether or not we can take it down or not, or tell them our options of what we would like to do. And then they, but they can't make any determination until they have the updated information as far as showing how it is deteriorating. So... And that's just what I'm worried about is not what you said, but like is the deterioration going to get back on us because they said you didn't take the courthouse and now you guys have to be responsible for this and pay all this back. That, that, that's what I'm worried about. Liability. Li you know, liability. Not just liability if it could fall and hurt somebody, but liability as in we got the money for this place, or well, I should say we, but the previous commission did. Now, with that deteriorating, does that violate that policy and can that come back on us? That's what I'm worried about. I haven't seen anything to say that. So. I think they'd have to prove neglect. You know, I think, as far as the State Historical Society said, they, to get taken down, they just need to have it updated. They we need to update his, the, I can't remember the name of the word for it. So that is our next step. So that, I mean, that's a that's a budget discussion if you want to put that in the budget to actually have that historical society update our 
our form there, then from there, then you can move forward to find out if we can take it down and stuff. But that until that is done, we are at a complete standstill. But well, we've asked over and over and over again for a checklist. Yeah, and I, I understand that. Aspect. And and, and they will never say that if you complete these checked items, you can tear it down. They'll say, no, do this, and then we're on the fourth do this now that we've paid money for, and then they come up with another item. And I just, I, I understand that. I just don't want it to be something where, oh, you neglected it, now you have to pay that back because you violated the terms of it's, it's the grant of, that you got. That's what I'm problem is that it, it, it deteriorates more, become more and more of an eyesore. Yeah. That's what's yeah. going to happen eventually. Or something majorly yeah. happens yeah. to it, like a piece of, like the, like the top steeple falls off, then it might be forced to do something, you know yeah. what I'm saying? That's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is another one of those things there's going to be a decision made and and you're going to have to live with the decision it's not going to be a good one you, people are going to be mad on either side of it yeah. and there's no way to pass the blame to anybody it's just what are the what would a reasonable person say would a reasonable voter say yeah you guys got to maintain that no <coughs> a reasonable voter would say you got to tear it down and the same reasonable voter would say well you tore it down though we got to pay back a million dollars there's no way and that, and that won't cover the cost, even to turn it down, will it? No. I don't know. I have no idea on that. Yeah, they were saying when, I remember Dale was here, he remember the comment that Mercer County tore theirs down. Yeah. But uh, Paul Clark, or one of the mines, donated a hole to put it in to bury it. Yeah. And they downmolished it. Yeah. So I think, I think at the present time, we're doing protect the public from hurt. Liability. There's, and you know, I don't know. Uh, or at least they picking, are they at least picking up the stuff that are falling? I don't think anything's fallen yet. I think it was just the danger of it falling. Okay. I just want to make sure like that way it doesn't get left and look too, I mean, don't get me wrong, the fence itself is a little bit of an eyesore, but we I, have to I don't think there's anything falling, actually falling off, falling off there yet, that I'm aware of. No. If you're around, if you're around here long enough, and any of us are around here long enough, some future commission is finally going to have to say the hell with it. We're going to tear that down, no matter what the cost, and live with, it, and and then deal with the repercussions from it, because we're never going to get permission to tear it down. There, there's no way in the world we've tried for all this time, and the people say they want it tore down. Why don't the people have the final say on this thing? That's what it's going to come down to. Probably another vote. What do you guys I, want to do? I understand. I understand. And, and we're just going to have to either say, yep, yeah, well, we're going to do it and live with the repercussions, or we're going to have to say, I don't want to be a commissioner and be involved with that and walk away. But it didn't, Steph, didn't you say there was some grants available for a school being torn down? Isn't that you telling us? Mm -mm. I think that was Jamie Meany. Uh, Jamie yeah. To tear it to be it, it'll be a historical building. They got grants to tear it down. Yeah, it'll be a sad day when the crowd does have to go down. But yeah, I agree. Because it's been there for so long, you know. It's eighty something. Yeah, eighty eight or something. I think yeah. yeah. four. I think I don't know. It's somewhere in the eighties. I'm sure it was probably before the, we became a state. It was probably oh, when yeah. Griggs County was formed or Cooperstown. Mr. Dakota days. Territory. <laughs> became yeah, you know, that the story, you know, R.C. Cooper funded the courthouse, you know, the, the building of it, okay. and the Masonic Temple, and also the Cooper House. Okay. He was an instrumental in all three. You know, that's the back story of that. Okay. Yeah. So. And the land. And the land, correct, yes, the land, Camille. Yeah. He was, no. History lesson. He was okay. at the center of his future business. I have the fair board and then the sheriff's office. Is there anything else? Sales ratio. Sales ratio. That's it. And then hopefully the Herald will have a. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Put D tax on put, put audit on her. Okay. Okay. Time for me again. You're an independent thinker. Go ahead. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Motion by Tranby to adjourn. Second by. No, second. Abriel. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, meeting adjourned. 1224, next meeting.
this chamber, May 20th at 9.30 a.m. Thank you all. Okay.